Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, good day all. Today we are going to look at the total cholesterol determination and uh, HDL cholesterol determination. So, so now on this lecture overview, this is what we are going to look at. As we said, the lecture for today is total cholesterol and HDL cholesterol determination. So first we are going to look at the uh, background of cholesterol metabolism, the measurement of cholesterol in diagnosis, then the characteristics of the major lipoproteins. And we are also going to look at the high density lipoprotein cholesterol, then what is the clinical correlation of the, this major lipoproteins. Then we're also going to look at the experiment related to the determination of the total cholesterol. And then in the estimation of the of HDL cholesterol. So now we are now moving to the background, starting with the background of the cholesterol metabolism. Although this cholesterol can mostly synthesized in the tissues of our body where it serves as a component of the cell membrane and it is produced mainly in the liver. So uh, I think under this, we need to understand something. This cholesterol that we usually have most, mostly is synthesized in the food. So it mostly is, is synthesized in our body. And um, although we can also get some from the foods that we are taking. And uh, the major point where this cholesterol are produced or synthesized are in the liver. So cholesterol and the cholesterol esters are transported in the blood. In the blood by lipoproteins, yeah, of course, cholesterol and some of these cholesterol esters are insoluble in water. So you cannot just uh, directly, uh, they cannot be transported directly into the, the other part of the body from the liver because of it is insolubility with the plasma, water, and other extra cellular fluids. So that is why they need a carrier. And this carrier are known as the lipoproteins. And we are going to look at these lipoproteins one after the other and, and see how they are important in our body and how also, because some are important and some have a negative effect in our body. So we are going to look at them one after the other. And this cholesterol is sold in tissues as cholesterol esters. So usually, in the tissues, we don't have free cholesterol. So it is usually in forms of cholesterol esters. And in certain endocrine tissues, cholesterol converted to steroid hormones. So it is very really important to understand that in some tissues, this cholesterol can be used to synthesize or to produce steroid hormones. And uh, these steroid hormones are very, very important. Some of them are involved in the minerals metabolism, while some are also important in like, uh, uh, some are actually used in the production of sex hormones. So and they are very essential. And this cholesterol is synthesized endogenously from cytosolic acetyl CoA. So of course, what we need to understand here is uh, this cholesterol, as we said, is synthesized in the liver. So what is the, the raw material or the ingredient or the starting material for the synthesis of this cholesterol? So the starting material is acetyl-CoA. And we know that these acetyl-CoA, we get them from different sources. You can get them from the product of beta oxidation of fatty acid. You can also get it from... Uh, uh, oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex enzymes that is um, a steve that involve in the uh, 
in, 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 in glucose metabolism. So I think it's also very important. Let's see how this importance is this. Look at how this is, how this cholesterol from here, you see this is cholesterol from here. So it's used in the production of uh, steroid hormones. And it's also used in the productions of cortisol and aldosterone hormones. It can also use in the productions of uh, vitamin D because of course the vitamin D are produced directly from the cholesterol. And we also have, uh, it's also important in the synthesis of cell membrane because if you look at our cell membrane by layer, it's usually composed by this cholesterol. So, and it's also used in the productions of bile acids, which used in the emulsification of fat. So ladies and gentlemen, it is very, very important in this point to understand that the cholesterol number one, uh, usually or are endogenous substances. It means that it is mostly produced in our body, specifically in the liver. And um, this cholesterol cannot move freely in the body. They need a carrier. And this carrier that usually transports this cholesterol and cholesterol esters from the liver to the other part of the body are called lipoproteins. And so also cholesterol cannot exist in a freely form. It's usually in cholesterol extra form. And uh, in addition, this cholesterol in, in the crime system is used in the synthesis of steroid hormones. And these are the examples of the steroid hormones, cortisol, aldosterone, testosterone, and estradiol, uh, typical examples of the hormones. So then the next thing is the measurement of cholesterol in diagnosis. How is it important in the diagnosis of the disease? Cholesterol testing is used in the evaluating the risks for one, atherosclerosis, myocardial occlusion, and relates to coronary, coronary heart disease. And it is part of the lipid profiles. So actually, by measuring the cholesterol level in the body, it will give you an idea of the risks a particular individual is on the atherosclerosis and myocardial occlusion and also coronary diseases. And it is one of the lipid profiles that we usually use in estimating the conditions of a particular person in terms of the disease, okay? Then elevated level of these cholesterols is a major component in the hereditary hyperlipoproteinemia. So high level of the cholesterol and the body is an indicator of a major mix of hereditary hyperlipoproteinemia. So that is why it is very, very important to be doing a routine check of your cholesterol level so that at least you know the conditions you are. Then cholesterol determinations are also frequently uh, play a major part in knowing the thyroid functions, how your liver is functioning, renal functions, and diabetes mellitus too. It is also used to monitor the effectiveness of diet, medication, lifestyle, lifestyle changes like exercises, stress management. So with the determination of the cholesterol, it will also give you a hint of all this uh, conditions, how your thyroid is functioning with the cholesterol level, you will be able to identify one or two things of this, the liver functions, the renal functions, and uh, the diabetes mellitus, and also it measures how effective the types of diet you are taking 
and also the toxicity of the medications and also the lifestyle changes. So the cholesterol level will provide answer if you are really running a good lifestyle and also the stress management. Okay, then the next thing that we are going to look at is uh, is uh, this thing, the characteristics. We are going to look at the characteristics of uh, we are going to look at the characteristics of uh, the major lipoproteins. The lipoproteins, we are going to look at it under the density, particles diameter, the percentage of triglycerol, the lipid cholesterol, percentage in each of the lipoproteins and the phospholipids and their functions. So the first one that we are going to look at is the chylomicrons. So the density of chylomicrons is 0 0.930 and the diameter of the particles is uh, 75 to 1,200 millimeter in lanes. And the, tri SL, the triglyceride in the chylomicrons is about 80 to 95%, while the cholesterol level is two to 7%, while the phospholipid is about three to 9%. And the functions, the main functions of the chylomicrons is to deliver dietary lipids. So if you eat a food that contains lipids, as we said, lipids are insoluble in plasma, water, and other extracellular foods. So it's the chylomicrons that will transport those lipids from the diet and take them to the other part of the body. And the next thing is the calomicrons remnants. The calomicrons remnant. In the calo, when we say calomicrons remnants, it means that there are a lot of things that are, are not there or that are already transported and released somewhere. So you see in the triglyceride, the percentage of triglycerides in the calomicrons remnant is zero. It's nothing because it all transport all the triglyceride lipids, phospholipids, and deposit them where they are needed. So it is a free, this one. So it's free. It means that it's after it delivers all the components it carries. So when we said chylomicrons remnant, it means that the chylomicrons without triglyceride, without lipid cholesterol, and without phospholipids. So it will now return dietary lipids to the liver. So after it does that, then it will now go back again and fix another dietary lipid and also transport it to the other part of the body. Then the next thing is uh, VLDL. VLDL stands for very low density lipoproteins. The density is uh, 9.930 to 1.006. And the particle diameter is 30 to 80. The triglyceride is 55 to 80. And the lipid cholesterol is 5 to 15 percent, while the first one of it is 10 to 25 percent. And the importance of this is to the liver and the genius lipid. So what they do usually is to carry the indigenous lipids and take them to other part of the body and deposit them. And we have IDL. IDL is intermediate density lipoproteins. And the density is 1.006 to 1.019. And the, 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 the particle diameter is 25 to 35. And the cholesterol, the triglycerides percentage is 20 to 50. And 20 to 40, then 15 to 25. Then this one, actually, it returns the indigenous defeat to the liver. Then it's also a mucosal of 
LDL. So it means that the LDL is produced directly from the low, from the intermediate density lipoproteins by the action of lipoprotein lipase enzymes. And then the next one is uh, uh, LDL. And these are the percentage of the triglycerides, uh, lipid cholesterol, and phospholipids. And what it does is actually it deliver cholesterol to the cell. So this is it is function. So that is why we call it bad cholesterol because what it does, it usually transfer lipids from the cholesterol, sorry, from the, uh, it, it, it transports cholesterol synthesized in the liver to other part of the body, like the artery. So that is when we have, if this cholesterol is deposited in the artery, it usually form a fly U, and that fly U, as it deposited, it reduces the area where the blood is usually first. And as a result of the decrease in the area, the fragile will now go high. So that conditions is known as a trace calorises. And then the next thing, one after this is uh, HDL, that is high density lipoproteins. And the percentage is, um, is the, the percentage of this HDL is uh, sorry, not the percentage, the cholesterol. Uh, this thing, look at it, the density is 1.036 and the diameter is 9 to 20. And then the triglyceride percentage is 5 to 10. And uh, then the lipid cholesterol is 15 to 25. And the, and the main functions is liver it reverse, it reverse cholesterol transport. So what it does is usually transport cholesterol from the cell and deposit them back to the liver. So that is why it's usually called a good cholesterol or it's very, very important in our body because it prevent us from uh, the risk factors, especially cardiovascular disease and uh, we need this in high amount in our body because it will really key for us to stay healthy. So that is why we need to have it in enough quantity. And to do that, actually, we need to take some diets that will increase this. And the example of this diet, we have like fruits. I will also do exercises. You also try as much as possible to avoid some back losses also tobacco smoking. So these are the three things that we usually for that they uh, that we usually normally used to do to increase the level of this HD. So I think for this, I will stop here on this. Number one, at least we understand that this cholesterol, how important are and how bad are they. The bad of the, the bad fat of this cholesterol is when they are high in the body, they cause diseases and, uh, and at the same time they are also important in synthesis of some important hormones and other vitamins like vitamin D, bile acid, and other things. So they are usually synthesized directly from the, the, the cholesterol. So it is very, very important. So and in the next lecture, we will also going to look at uh, the determination of the cholesterol in the blood.